thanks Amanta and Muthu for inviting me to present this uh, work with UJMRT. So uh, this work, uh, uh, I mean, the three of PhD students are involved in this work and some of my collaborators here. So I start with uh, some image which is familiar to maybe all the astronomers because this is the history of our uh, universe. And so, uh, as you can see, that uh, there are various kinds of structures that we see in our universe, right? From stars to um, this uh, galaxies and larger galaxy clusters and all. But the um, thing has started from the very early universe where you see the density fluctuation in the field and which grows uh, in time and finally forms the largest structures like galaxy cluster, galaxy groups and supercluster as well in the near universe and the very uh, uh, late stage of the universe. So that is where we will be focusing our study. So if you see the sky, I mean this is observable sky and uh, as I told you that uh, in the uh, lower airship only these bigger structures are forming. So I have taken very uh, near universe uh, observations from uh, this uh, galaxy surface. So uh, this one is showing the uh, how the structures in red shift and how the structures on the sky, this one. So these are uh, nothing but each point is one galaxy. So how galaxies are distributed in the universe. You see that they are not just scattered everywhere. They have some uh, filamentary regular network structure. If you see uh, whether it is in the red shift or in the sky plane. Fine. So what are the structures that we see? So uh, filamentary structures is uh, all there. Where there is no, you find some groups, clusters itself. I mean, uh, uh, those kind of objects. Uh, in the uh, nodes of these filaments. And uh, clusters are the biggest one, bound structure, gra gravitational bound structure, having tens of hundreds of galaxies there. However, the smaller structures are there, like groups uh, or uh, low mass clusters. Those are uh, uh, at the, uh, either uh, falling in the filament or in the smaller nodes, like smaller nodes. I will come to that point with uh, a better uh, Description is there. So, this kind of uh, you know, whatever we have seen here, it is observation, and here you cannot see the dynamics of the system, right? Because all these there and these are uh, evolving so uh, slowly in our sense that you cannot follow the dynamics. For that, you need to do simulations because uh, we have pretty um, good understanding of the uh, uh, physics of these systems. And with that, you can actually simulate the uh, uh, sky. So, uh, okay. So you can see that the left side is the density evolution. So uh, this is about forty by forty uh, uh, projected sky, forty by forty megaparsec projected sky, and this is density. And uh, this uh, uh, circular. Um, uh, white things are actually the virial radius of the system. So you can see that structures are of various sizes, but the bigger one is at the uh, node, as we saw in the um, uh, galaxy survey map also. But the smaller ones, they are falling in the filament. They are coming from the filament to this node. Okay, And some in smaller nodes, also they are such kind of structures. So these are galaxy clusters. We have focused our um, uh, simulation into this region where a big cluster is merging. And when this big cluster merges, you see that these kind of shocks are generated from that. So that is a temperature map, so thermal evolution of the system. This is density evolution, that is thermal evolution. Okay, fine. So now we can actually focus into some of these structures, bigger structures. I have taken as an example of April 3376, which is a moderately massive cluster. And uh, if you see it in optical domain, optical image, and in, since it is very um, uh, low red 
you will see lots of uh, uh, galaxies there. So you cannot even guess where is that guy sitting in the uh, field. Uh, you can do that if you have the red shift information and you have to run some algorithm to grouping the system and you can see where it is. But uh, in this image, you cannot see. If you go into X-ray, then you start seeing that there is a structure. Actually, there is a bomb structure because you know X-ray emission comes from the hot with the uh, intracluster medium. Okay, so uh, if it is enough hot, it, it will do free free emission, and you you will find that uh, there is a structure which is uh, bright in X-ray, right? But still. As we saw that there were, when it is merging, if, if you see this structure, you will see this is very much elongated, right? That means it is in a merging state. If it was not merging, then usual uh, spherical collapse model says it will be almost spherical kind of thing. But here it is in a merging state. Uh, if we see more detailed X-ray map, you will see substructures are there. So that means this is in a merging state. So if merges, we saw from our, our earlier simulation that there should be some soft kind of thing because merger releases a huge amount of energy, like 10 to the 64 hours um, uh, energy, and that energy uh, um, dissipates only through uh, producing shocks and turbulence. So that should be seen here. Yes, that can be seen, but in radio, because dynamical features are catch in radio uh, emission much better because uh, the synchrotron, I mean, radio emission in large scale structure is nothing but synchrotron emission. You have magnetic field, you have uh, high energy particles, it radiates in synchrotron, um, uh, I mean, through the synchrotron and produces the radio emission. But uh, synchrotron electrons are uh, very short lived. And something which is short lived gives you dynamical features much better because you can resolve that time. Okay, so that's how you can see the socks here. And so this cluster is, is in merging state and that is so. And the emission that is coming from actually synchrotron emission. So what it tells that those systems are full of high energy particles as well as magnetic field is there. Otherwise we could not have seen the radio emission that is coming from there. Okay, so Another thing I told that when it merges, what more features you can see in the system, right? So uh, 10 to the power 6, uh, uh, 10 to the power 64 hours of energy is not uh, very, uh, I mean, something which every day we um, work with. Huh? So uh, it's uh, next to like what we think that Big Bang may be a huge energetic event. It's maybe next to that. Okay. So those energy has to dissipate once it, um, uh, because it's kind of binding energy because two or uh, many uh, um, objects are coming together, merging. So uh, while merging, it uh, actually uh, binding energy gets released and that has to dissipate in the system to make it relapsed. Okay, so that dissipation happens one in th through the shock production and another thing you can see the turbulence. Uh, turbulence filtering in astrophysical fluid is a very complicated job, but you can guess from the uh, uh, vorticity of the system, which is nothing but curl of velocity vectors in the field. Okay, so uh, it's a, um, a very good proxy to that, and you see the same merging system how it e evolves. Even in the filament, you can see a high order of uh, turbulence, right? And the smaller objects everywhere, but most of the turbulent energy goes into when it merges and produces huge amount of turbulent <laughs> energy. Fine. This would come up in uh, observable domain, right? These kind of things should be seen in uh, observation. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, various kind of wave band you observe them, you will be seeing it. But we are most interested in the non-thermal production because we saw that there is a lot of uh, turbulence in the system. So, what are the observables? And we are mostly targeting the radio because dynamical features we want to see. So uh, uh, as I told you that hot plasma gives X-ray. So this color map is showing X-ray while the contours are showing the radio. 
So uh, uh, this uh, uh, thing shows that uh, radio emission permits the central halo emission as well because this must be in merging state. So producing a lot of turbulence which accelerates particles and gives uh, rise to radio emission from those regions. So this, this kind of structure in radio, uh, um, I mean, domain called the radio halo structure. Whereas uh, the merging system that I told you earlier that it produces shock. So those features also should come as a, we saw in for Able 3376. So these are some kind of uh, shock structures. There is no uh, um, uh, direct correlation yet, but these are the features that we see and some uh, kind of uh, analysis can be done which shows that this is shock structures. These are called the radio uh, cluster radio shocks. Earlier it used to be called as radio relics. So we still go by that term, radio relic. And there are other few uh, objects like in a cluster, you'll see uh, there are many galaxies. So those galaxies are red, maybe some of them are radio galaxies. So they will be producing radio emission from uh, uh, their jets. And uh, what happened again, these are short lived. So what will happen? It will radiate and go into oblivion. It cannot be detected uh, after some time. Uh, because it lost all the energy once the jet emission has stopped. Okay, so what will happen to those kind of uh, electrons? They become fossil electrons. So either when they are becoming fossil electrons, they will interact with the cluster medium and um, get little bit revived and so up in the uh, telescope, so called uh, radio remnants. And if they go into fossil state and because of the cluster dynamics, they get revived, we call them uh, revived fossils or the phoenix. Okay. There is another kind of radio emission that we see from clusters that is called radio mini halo. These are different than the halo. Why? These structures does, uh, found in relaxed cluster where there is no merger. So you know that turbulence won't be that much, right? If it is not. Merger. So uh, we cannot expect that it will uh, produce that much of uh, high energy particle to uh, produce radio emission. So how it is producing? Because uh, relaxed cluster consists of uh, mil, uh, mostly uh, um, brightest galaxy cluster at the same time. And uh, that is uh, many times they are radio agents. So once they emit uh, radio, uh, radio, that means they have a lot of electrons, charged particles which will be diffusing out in this uh, medium. So there are two kinds of model proposed. One is that the diffuse out uh, electrons, which are already accelerated, they get uh, re-accelerated by the weak turbulence in the system because they are a uh, system in formation, not maybe in the um, uh, merging state, but they have low level of turbulence there that will revive and so you are. So it's, ICM or intercluster medium emission only, not from the galaxy itself. Another thing is that this galaxy may produce uh, hadronic showers and so secondary electrons may come. And those secondary electrons are already energized. There is magnetic field in those systems. They will be uh, accelerating and um, getting, I mean, in magnetic field, they will be producing synchrotron emission. So these kind of models are there. So we saw there are uh, three, four kinds of objects radio objects that you can see from the galaxy cluster. Mm -hmm. Fine, so this was the background. Now, what happened with those data, people started looking at if there is some correlation between the cluster mass and uh, the uh, radio emission that is happening, mainly the bulk emission, the central emission, radio halo emission. So what they found that uh, there is a correlation and this is very steep, four, the uh, exponent is four. So that means what it says. Now, another thing is there. There are few clusters which can, uh, did not show any emission. So they, the, those people told that they are, uh, I mean, some kind of upper limit can be put for uh, those clusters that this much radio may be uh, there, but those are falling much below. So there is a uh, uh, bimodal distribution of non radio halo cluster and radio halo cluster. Right. In the uh, max radio power uh, plot. But what they found is that the steep spectrum uh, of or steep correlation, what it says that if you go down in the mass, then what will happen? You won't see any emission 
or at least you cannot detect them because it is very steep. It will be producing very low radio emission. Uh, with that uh, information, they uh, produce some curve which is for low far as a for prediction that how much uh, or how many objects will be detected by low far at lower frequency. So uh, this green line, uh, I mean, I have taken their plot only as an item 2010. Uh, this green line never comes good in <laughs> this display, but uh, maybe you can see this green line is actually the low far um, uh, 150 megahertz band. And they showed that low mass cluster, you can see the mass, this is 10 to the 15. So this is 5 into 10 to the 15. Below that, the detection percent will be less than a percent. I mean, detection uh, fraction will be less than a percent of all galaxies. That means you have almost no possibility of detecting these low mass systems. So, uh, but you have to see, I mean, why they have made it uh, like this? Because they have assumed that uh, this system will follow the self-similarity. So self-similarity is a hydrostatic or maybe gravitational um, uh, assumption. Uh, that may not be true for the non-gravitational um, uh, energy uh, evolution, right? So they that did not consider that they considered that this will be like this because self similarity is there. So uh, that uh, brings me to search for if there is some uh, um, comment by some scientists that there is a deviation from that. You can see it has been uh, in 1999 that uh, Ponman and 2001, uh, Brian and White, they told that they have found that uh, the uh, correlation that is followed by high mass system does not follow by the, uh, does not follow by the low mass systems. So they are deviating in uh, uh, this entropy. So entropy is a parameter that tells you how agitated the system is. Okay, so if the system is agitated, that means there is some instability, there will be turbulence in the system. And if uh, more turbulence, that means you uh, can understand that some more particle acceleration will be there. So why to consider them uh, at, a, uh, at part the ma uh, massive objects, right? So that uh, brings me to simulate something again. I mean, uh, we have done those uh, uh, simulations. This is from our simulation only. And we again um, saw that many of them are falling in the filaments, these low mass systems. If they are in filament, what will happen? Filament is a, uh, I mean, uh, shallower potential. So if they merge, that uh, uh, it's very much unstable to that merger. That means that it longer uh, stays in the uh, unstable state. Okay, um, um, uh, very deep potential will bring the system very fast into uh, relaxed condition, which is not happening. Also, because of the filaments are in a uh, directional, uh, this dependence is there, so they will be stretched, and that may induce some more turbulence in the system. Fine. So, uh, and another issue was that these smaller structures are abundant in the universe. So, we are actually missing most of the uh, information from these uh, structures if we don't uh, observe them. <clears throat> so uh, that uh, brings us to produce some more thing. We have uh, here you can see the uh, background, this plus, uh, they are from simulated clusters. What we have plotted is ready, uh, sorry, X-ray emission from the system, uh, I mean, temper, I mean, with the system temperature. So what we found that you, you can just be, uh, visually see that this is the correlation line for the high temperature system and it falls down at some point of time. That means uh, the low temperature system produce very less amount of X-ray. And if you see in the entropy, as we saw earlier also into the uh, 1999 paper, we have pro uh, produced that and again saw that though they are following a uh, correlation up to some point of time, uh, beyond that it is going uh, above the correlation line. Then we plotted with mass because that is the correlation everyone wants to see. And what we saw that at 10 to the 14 solar mass, there is a break around 10 to the power 14 solar mass, there is a break. So that means the uh, energy content is actually differing 
and not following the self similarity as the people have expected. And what happens that uh, while X ray emission goes low, uh, the cosmic ray uh, acceleration uh, goes high. So, why? Because um, uh, that is non thermal emission, as we earlier saw, that uh, a lot of turbulence are there in the smaller system also. Here you can see that this turbulence in bigger cluster, this is R1000, uh, over density 1000 of the system, and it is over density 200. And uh, uh, within this region, usually the radio comes very small from very small region. You can see both in smaller object and bigger object, the turbulence energy is almost like similar and not uh, going uh, apart by uh, order. And shock wise, you will see, so there are uh, uh, shocks. Here in bigger system, you do not see any very strong shock inside. Whereas in smaller system, you see strong shock inside. That means you will see that um, this cluster um, uh, shock, uh, radio shocks will be more in the uh, smaller system. So this kind of difference you can see, uh, which has not been earlier predicted. This brings us to uh, compute the uh, radio emission from these systems in uh, simulation. Uh, uh, about this, uh, Pratik will talk, I mean, tell you something more, I am skipping this, this time is less. So uh, this uh, uh, radio, uh, I mean, uh, one thing I can say is that uh, if you compute radio, you need the magnetic field computation as well as the injection of the uh, electrons uh, in the system. And that can happen with diffusive shock acceleration as we saw the shock is there and the turbulent reacceleration. Okay, and turbulence is there, so that will be happening from there. and. Then you need to uh, uh, compute the magnetic field and what we saw that magnetic field can be um, equiparted with the turbulent uh, energy density. So from that you can uh, actually compute and we saw it is very, pretty much matching with the coma cluster uh, magnetic field uh, profile. And then we compute, we saw that many low mass systems are showing higher magnetic field in the system. That uh, uh, with that information, when we uh, actually computed the radio power at 1.4 gigahertz, which is standard one, and we saw that the Cassano et al. that slow uh, uh, and our uh, system are showing that it is deviating from the uh, correlation and it is going above correlation. That means more detection probability. We also saw and predicted that there will be at least five, around 3 to 5 percent of objects that will be detected uh, with radio in radio waves. And then we actually did the first uh, systematic search for radio emission from low mass cluster because we saw that below uh, 5 into 10 to the power 14 solar mass there is no information available and those people were drawing all the conclusion from only massive systems. So uh, the, uh, uh, this was the first paper uh, in this direction uh, with a systematic search. So what was the search is we took the most reliable mass um, uh, I mean, um, computation as uh, Sonia Jelovic, uh, I mean, uh, signal uh, from Planck uh, uh, cluster list. We have uh, shortlisted our um, systems and so because you know, if you just come, come about and say that uh, I will be observing with uh, GMRT because I have uh, shown in uh, computation that this will uh, show more uh, emission and all, they won't give time. So we have to choose a different path. What we have done is we have you know, looked for the best available survey, which was low for that time, luckily. So, um, and then uh, went into search in the field that if radio emission is seen there. So what we saw that um, uh, 14 cluster with low mass falls in that um, uh, low far uh, sky and uh, out of that five have indication of radio emission. So we proposed it for uh, GMRT observation and what we found is very uh, uh, encouraging. So there are halo type emission in two clusters and uh, relic and trailing emission, all sorts of very interesting emissions are found in that low mass system. Uh, going against the uh, earlier prediction, actually. So you see that 14% of uh, uh, low mass cluster in those uh, 14 uh, uh, chosen clusters showed the uh, um, radio emission uh, 
uh, and it, it is uh, much above the predicted uh, what was predicted earlier and uh, this actually strongly supports our uh, claim now the final thing is that these uh, uh, once we proven that okay low mass clusters are really interesting with our work now we can go for a larger survey so that is the glomex survey ugmrt low mass uh, cluster survey so we saw that these uh, uh, lower mass systems are i mean there is uh, still lot of blank and we have chosen uh, those cluster from uh, blank sc uh, field and uh, proposed uh, 13 object in the first cycle which is spanning almost all over the sky and the results are here and this is first time i'm displaying this result it's uh, the paper is almost done uh, not published yet so uh, you can see that diffuse emission radio emissions are here you can uh, interpret it, it as two uh, uh, in x-ray you can see that uh, substructures are there possibly they are moving from each other and that's why uh, they have produced this relic like structure but this one is not really ready. this could be diffuse emission from the icm as well in other uh, structure uh, this is a high re resolution map this is certainly a um, radio galaxy but in the center in low, low resolution map you will see some diffuse emission available there is a really kind of emission which has been also seen in low Earth recent uh, observation and lastly as i told you inside the cluster uh, socks are uh, strong in low mass cluster so this is the first evidence of uh, uh, radio relic which is found in the core of the cluster so this is the first evidence of that so these are the uh, results these are promising results so uh, uh, i mean you can see that out of 13 uh, actually we have just uh, reduced only five uh, eight more are there uh, which are in the first stage of reduction but has not been uh, fully done so out of five you can see that in three we got very interesting uh, results from radio uh, this thing that is more than 50 percent detection rate and um, yeah so this gives a very good hope that our uh, glomex survey will uh, really bring out what is the truth behind this okay so thank you thanks Rilip. we have uh, time for a couple of three questions Agus. Earlier, your slide showed that a uh, long time ago, that uh, this is a uh, there in the galaxy, the shock there will be particle acceleration. Yeah. Is it possible, must be to uh, compute the, what, the gamma ray uh, flux to the PP interaction, and or maybe if there are electrons you are saying it's because of the pi neutral decay, so that may produce either gamma ray by inverse Compton or something like that. So, is it possible to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it is usually done. Uh, because the same acceleration mechanism is active for proton as well as electron. So first thing is that uh, if proton can be accelerated to that much energy, you will be, I mean, the uh, highest energy particle should actually come from clusters because of these socks. Because if you see that socks are almost uh, evolving like uh, spherical socks, and that creates a cyclotron kind of thing, and which is of uh, more than megaparsec size. So you just calculate how much energy it will give it. Maybe ten to the power. Right. Basically, if you see the cosmic spectrum, there are two traits like uh, knee and ankle. So the, most of the uh, highest energy particle about ankles come like it should be coming from this kind of yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll probably hear more about that in the next talk. Let's quickly check if there is any question from online. So can you just uh, come out of the full screen mode? Then we'll throw okay. <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, There's nothing. Nothing. No. Just one quick question from my side. So yeah. then, uh, in these low mass clusters, will you expect? You say that you are going to expect more shocks. That means you will see more Rayleigh or Pionix regions in these compared to high mass. Yes. Yes. Actually, uh, already we have done some uh, calculation from low uh, far second uh, data release. Yeah. So it's like among the detected. Uh, Sources, 
31% in low mass cluster showing uh, relics, whereas 21% in high mass. So why? No, that's a, uh, because uh, low mass uh, cluster environment is cooler, yeah. much cooler than the uh, high mass. So shock is temperature dependent, yeah. but it's not really dependent on the mass because it depends on the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when two blobs are merging, it depends on the mass ratio, not on the mass. So in uh, lower uh, mass cluster also, you can see the same velocity. Uh, it is going out, but in a cooler medium. So it will produce higher uh, Mach number. So if it is higher, Mach number is higher, you know that radio emission will be higher. So that's all. And we have seen it. Okay, uh, thanks. Long live India and France friendship.